For generations, humanity has marched toward the outer edge of what physics allows. Microchips, the lifeblood of modern civilization, have evolved at an extraordinary pace, shaped by one guiding principle. Shrink the transistor, double the power, half the cost. Every microscopic leap forward in semiconductor design has been a triumph over nature's most stubborn boundaries. But for all our progress, we believed we had begun to see the outer walls of possibility. We had mapped the contours of the unknown and named the limits, or so we thought. And then, without warning, a signal emerged, a quiet, almost imperceptible ripple from across the globe that soon became a seismic wave. China may have achieved the impossible. Not a marginal gain, not an incremental improvement. A full-scale technological rupture. The claim? A functioning one nanometer chip. If real, this would not just be a breakthrough, it would be a cataclysm for the semiconductor world as we know it. At a scale where classical physics gives way to quantum chaos, a chip this small would defy every established assumption, every forecast, every roadmap. It would mean rewriting the rules that have governed the entire microchip industry for decades. It would represent a break, not just from technological stagnation, but from reality as it's currently understood in silicon-based design. This isn't about leapfrogging a competitor, it's about leaping beyond the horizon of what we thought was even remotely achievable. Moore's Law, the principle that the number of transistors on a chip doubles approximately every two years, has been the heartbeat of innovation since the dawn of the digital age. It fueled everything from home computers to global AI infrastructure. It gave us smartphones, supercomputers, and sprawling data centers that power the modern economy. But Moore's Law has been slowing. For the last several years, the global tech industry has inched forward cautiously, each nanometer more difficult to conquer than the last. Three nanometer chips, once thought to be science fiction, have become the new gold standard, achievable only by the most elite manufacturers using the most advanced tools humanity has ever built. And yet now, this sudden announcement throws the entire trajectory of chip evolution into chaos. A jump to one nanometer would be a tectonic shift, a movement not of years, but of decades. To understand just how radical this claim is, one must appreciate the scale we're talking about. A single strand of human DNA measures around 2.5 nanometers wide. At one nanometer, you are entering a realm where individual atoms are no longer theoretical limits. They are the actual tools and materials of construction. Electrons behave unpredictably. Heat and energy cease to behave in familiar ways. At this size, classical mechanics give way to quantum tunneling, leakage currents, and instability that threaten. Designing something at this scale is not merely difficult, it borders on absurd. Overcoming these quantum barriers would demand new classes of materials, methods of fabrication so precise they rival surgical procedures at the atomic level, and control mechanisms that do not yet exist in mainstream industry. For years, Global semiconductor experts have argued that to even approach one nanometer, the world would need to abandon silicon entirely or invent entirely new paradigms, perhaps spintronics, photonics, or quantum-based logic. The consensus has always been that this goal lies far in the future, if it's even possible at all. And yet here comes China, reportedly claiming to have done it. But how? Conventional chip manufacturing at these cutting-edge nodes relies on extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography, a technology developed primarily by ASML, a Dutch company that stands virtually alone in its ability to supply the world with these multi-million dollar machines. EUV systems operate with mind-bending precision, printing microscopic patterns on silicon wafers using light with wavelengths so short they border on X-rays. These machines are restricted by international export controls, specifically to prevent them from reaching nations that could use them to produce advanced ships. China, as it stands, is cut off from this capability. So if they are locked out of EUV, how did they pull off one nanometer? One hypothesis suggests an astonishing level of ingenuity using older deep ultraviolet DV systems. These machines, technologically a generation behind, are not meant to print such fine features, but with advanced multi-patterning, a process that overlays multiple layers to simulate finer resolutions, it's possible, 
though wildly inefficient and astronomically expensive, to approach levels previously considered unattainable. The amount of engineering coordination, precision alignment, and error correction needed for this would be staggering. <laughs> Another theory is more speculative, but also more exciting. It involves materials that exist only on the cutting edge of science. Graphene, transition metal dichalcogenides, atomically thin sheets with exotic properties, ultra-high conductivity, mechanical flexibility, quantum robustness. These materials are still in the research phase globally, yet China has poured vast sums into material science, and perhaps they've pulled ahead in a way that hasn't yet been visible to Alternatively, this could be a fundamental shift in architecture. Perhaps this isn't a traditional transistor-based chip at all. It could be something new, beyond CMOS, beyond silicon, built on experimental principles not yet mainstream. The mystery, of course, is deepened by the lack of data. There's no physical sample in circulation, no teardown, no analysis, no peer-reviewed papers, claims, whispers, speculation, and the looming possibility that it could be either the greatest technological miracle of the modern era or one of the most sophisticated misdirections in tech history. Because make no mistake, if this chip is real, it reorders the global tech balance overnight. The entire semiconductor ecosystem, spanning dozens of nations, thousands of companies, and trillions of dollars, is built on a precarious interdependence. Dominance in advanced chip manufacturing means dominance in everything from artificial intelligence and quantum computing to military hardware and advanced surveillance. Surveillance, if China has indeed cracked this code, it could mean true self-reliance, independence from foreign supply chains, immunity to export controls supremacy in the next era of computing. It would also mean that the current hierarchy, led by the US, Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan, would no longer be guaranteed. Entire markets could be upended. Strategic alliances could shift. The very notion of technological leadership would be contested in a way it hasn't been in decades. But skepticism remains high, and understandably so. Industry veterans point to the enormous difference between creating something in a lab versus manufacturing it at scale. A single chip in a clean room does not equal mass production. Others suggest this is a messaging strategy, a geopolitical chess move designed to project strength, to send a signal, to psychologically destabilize competitors. In the world of advanced technology, perception is power, and the illusion of supremacy can sometimes be as effective as the reality. There's also the issue of definitions. What China may be calling a one nanometer chip might not correspond with the conventional measurement of a process node. The industry has long since abandoned literal dimensions in naming these nodes. A so-called five nanometer chip doesn't necessarily have five NM transistors. It's a branding shorthand for a cluster of performance characteristics. China's definition could be entirely different based on feature length, logic density, or other internal criteria not aligned with, and yet, beneath the fog of uncertainty, one thing is absolutely clear. China's semiconductor push is real. Their ambition is colossal. Their investment levels are almost unimaginable. They are building domestic capacity not just at the high end, but across the entire spectrum, from 14 NM and 12 NM chips, all the way to cutting-edge packaging, fabrication equipment, and design automation software. They've proven themselves capable at 7M and potentially 5Ms. They are assembling talent, establishing infrastructure, training engineers by the thousands. They are not just playing catch up, they are rewriting the game to suit their own rules. Even if the one nanometer chip turns out to be exaggerated or symbolic, the signal it sends is unambiguous. China is no longer content to follow. It wants to lead. It wants to define the next era of technology on its own terms, at its own pace, regardless of who's watching or resisting. The chip war is no longer about catching up. It's about control of economies, of infrastructures, of futures. So where does that leave the rest of the world? Cautiously watching, quietly racing, desperately innovating. Because whether this particular milestone has been reached or not, the future of semiconductors has just become more unpredictable than ever before. And this story, this challenge to physics, this claim that reshapes everything, might just